Hey guys, it's time for my next DIY project video and I am super excited about this one. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you saw the teaser I did on my last DIY project, which was the Diddly Fork. I did a little teaser at the end and showed you this box right here, this Muslati box, which it contained all the parts that I used to make this project. So if you're a subscriber to my channel, you already saw that. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, then subscribe now because clearly you like this kind of content and I have tons of this kind of stuff. So subscribe for me. Um, by the way, I just gave away a guitar to one of my subscribers and I can tell you at the time of this, uh, at the time of this recording, I have 436 subscribers and I'm going to give away something else when I get to 500. So you might want to subscribe so that you don't miss that. It could be this instrument right here, but let me show you. Today's DIY project is this, my first six string. And uh, as I mentioned before, this came from one of the Muslati kits, but I used a lot of my own parts. I'm gonna talk more about that as we go on. But the inspiration for this, it came from Shane Spiel. If you're uh, a fan of homemade instruments, you probably are already subscribed to Shane Spiel. But uh, he recently built one of their um, headless guitar kits. And I saw that video, I was like, man, that was cool. And so I went out and checked out this Muslati brand, checked out and they have all kinds of kits. They have like a Telecaster kit and a Strat kit and a Les Paul kit and whatever. And they had this one that's based on the old Melody Maker shape, which I've always really liked the Gibson Melody Maker. And so I picked up this kit and then, like I said, I put more of my own parts than the actual parts that came with it. Um, and I'll take you on a tour of this guitar here in just a second, but it came out just fantastic. I am super pleased with it. The stain and the varnish and everything came out really nice. The electronics, I had some special parts on hand that I used for this, a couple parts I've been saving that I used for this. So I'm just really pleased with it. And uh, let me take you on a tour of the guitar and then we'll do some sound clips. Okay, let's do a tour of this guitar from bridge to headstock here. First things first, you'll notice this uh, color is kind of a dark stain. And this is actually the stain that's on the floors in my house. So after the floors, um, we refinished the floors and this was some leftover stain. And so I just used that to finish this guitar. And then I enameled on top of it or lacquered on top of it with this right here, this Rust-Oleum lacquer that you see there. And I used that to clear coat. So that's what's responsible for the finish here. And the back of it actually is a pretty good, let's see if I can flip it over there, you can see so incidentally, this um, control plate cover is one of the few parts that came with the guitar that I used. I used, of course, the neck, the fretboard, and the body, but most of the parts I swapped out. This control plate I used, and also this jack plate I used, even though the jack is swapped out. All the electronics were swapped out, so the jack and the pots and the switch here, more about that in a second, were all swapped out. You notice some diamond plate here. And the reason that I did this diamond plate is I was going for like a hot rod theme on this guitar. And I cut this truss rod cover and this pickup cover out of diamond plates um, just to give it kind of that car, you know, hot rod aesthetic. By the way, these knobs and button that I chose also I thought really looked like something out of an old car. This is like radio knobs and like a, an ignition button or something. Um, so here, let's start up at the top and go down. So you notice it's got this logo up here, Cheapo Less Dull, which of course is in the font of the Gibson Les Paul. I thought that was kind of funny. But I bought this from Guitar Fetish, and I think that's the only part I had to buy. I think everything else I had on hand. Um, and so I actually put that on there before I did the lacquer, so that is actually part of the finish now. It's sealed in there. And you also notice it has this squared off headstock. Well, you can cut it into more of the Gibson style style open book headstock if you're looking for that, or you can do like a crown headstock. But I just kind of like the aesthetic of it being kind of big and chunky, so I just left it. Um, and these tuners I had on hand, these are the um, kind of Gibson style tuners that have the green tuning keys. I hope that's showing up on the video. But uh, there you go. You can see them there. And they got these kind of greenish plastic tuning keys or, you know, whatever that is. I believe it's a plastic. Anyway, um... You know, and I really like the aesthetic of how they looked. I thought they kind of really added to the, the hot rod effect. So um, I went with those. And then the nut also is one of the parts that came with the guitar that I used. Then that might be about the end of it. Well, I guess the strap buttons. There's a strap button there and then one on the back. Can you see that? There we go. Um, so uh, those actually came with the kit. 
And let's see here in this pickup ring, and I used the Tunematic, the bridge here, and the bridge studs. I think that's about it. The vast majority of the parts I either had on hand or, or, or made in the case of these. But so this was initially a two pickup model, and um, I wanted to do a single pickup because I wanted that hot rod thing to me says single pickup, and I thought it'd be cool to cover this with something, which is why I ended up with the diamond plate idea. But while I had it, um, while I was finishing it, I took a piece of poplar and cut it and put it in there to kind of add a little extra strength and kind of glued it in place uh, with the neck so that it's kind of all one, one, it's not one piece because there's still, you know, a couple of cavities in there, but it helped, you know, a little bit, or at least in my head it did. Um, so by the way, real quick, the instructions that come with these, here's the instruction manual and they're terrible. First of all, as you can see, they're not even for this guitar. Um, they don't, they're mostly in, in Chinese or, or Korean or whatever language that is. And they don't have anything to tell you what size drill bits to use or anything. And you have to drill all these holes. There are zero holes drilled. They do the routes, which is nice, but they don't drill any of the holes. So I had to drill these bridge studs, which that's a pretty tense activity if you haven't done something like that. Um, so you have to drill all that yourself. Um, anything that has screws, you have to drill. And they don't tell you anything about what size holes to use. So there is a lot of... Um, a lot of work involved. But uh, I used the pickup ring, but I had this pickup. I've been saving this for a while, waiting for the right project, and I decided this was it. This is an actual gold foil pickup, but it's in a humbucker size case, whereas the original gold foil pickups were more like a soap bar shape. And this one's actually in a humbucker case, so it fits in any humbucker guitar, but it's a single coil gold foil pickup inside there. So I used that, and I really like the way it came out. The aesthetic of it is really cool. And I also had this trapeze tailpiece that came off of an arch top guitar. And I had that as well, and I used that just to set it off instead of the standard stop bar here. Plus, it meant two less holes that I had to drill in the uh, in the surface of the body here. Um, these control knobs I had on hand, I really thought they looked like, you know, something off a radio or an ignition switch or something from an old car, so I really liked those. Inside here, inside the control cavity, I already put the cover on, but inside there I put a couple of 250K pots and uh, wired them up to that pickup. And then uh, I used my own jack that I had on hand and wired all that up. And the thing was, since this was designed to be a two pickup guitar, it had a hole here for the switch. Well, I wasn't gonna use the switch on a single pickup, so I was like, I need to find something to plug that hole. And I had this button and I wired it up to be a momentary kill switch. So inside of this cavity here, this just goes over to the jack. If you've never wired a guitar kill switch, the easiest way to do it, if you have a momentarily uh, open, yeah, momentarily open switch, I had to think about that for a second, is just wire it to the two studs of the jack. And then what happens is when you push this button, it'll short the jack and it'll stop the sound. And that's actually easier than a lot of the other methods. There are some other methods as well, but that's how I hooked it up in here. And then when I did this bridge, I actually drilled, I know you can't see it now, but I'll have a still I'll put in there. I drilled a hole through from the bridge to the pickup cavity here and so I could run a main ground. So everything's actually grounded to the bridge, making it you know nice and quiet. Um, you can see there I did a silver paint spot on both of these where 100% is, so as you roll it back, you can tell if you're not at 100%. Um, and that is about the size of this thing. So some diamond plate to cover these that I made, uh, you know, the rest of the parts I think I went over. So it's a very unique guitar. Okay, so um, let's hear what this thing sounds like. I mean. So guys, I just finished this thing like 20 minutes ago, just put the strings on it. So number one, the strings are probably gonna stretch. It's probably gonna go out of tune while I'm playing it here. But uh, number two, I haven't heard it yet. I mean, while I was building it, while I was doing all the electronics and stuff, I, I plugged it in to test it, but it didn't have strings on it. So I haven't heard the actual, you know, sound of the guitar yet. So we're gonna hear this together for the first time. This will be kind of cool. So bring the volume up here. Nice clean tone, it sounds good. song there that was totally impromptu I didn't realize I was gonna end up playing a song there but anyway sounds pretty good let's hear the uh, let's hear the dirty tune
Okay, so let's roll the tone back. Added a little reverb on the amp. Hopefully you can hear that. Let's try, let's see what this sounds like. 